This is a supplemental video on things. I'm going to do a series of these on boring things that put students to sleep. And this one is on the various textual editions of Hamlet. I'm going to ask all of my Shakespeare students, both in my lecture and my seminar and graduate class, all of them to watch this because you sort of need to know this to know what the problems are about Shakespeare, but I promise I'll make it short. Now, we are uh, in the Internet Shakespeare editions. We're looking at Hamlet. In some of my other classes, we're doing other plays, but I'll show you the famous problem with Hamlet and the reason that uh, maybe you'll see it. It will become abundantly clear uh, why I'm doing this. Okay, Hamlet was published in three widely variant versions during or very close to the time of Shakespeare's life. The first quarto, which is much smaller, was in 1603 and may be unauthorized. And the second quarto, much bigger, 1604. And it may have been based on Shakespeare's own papers. Then the famous first folio text, 1623. Now this is seven years after Shakespeare has died, but it's a very reliable text. And it's a good thing that we have it because without the big folio edition, we wouldn't have a lot of Shakespeare's play. So I have already explained what a quarto is, paper folded twice, basically, and smaller, a smaller book a folio, a larger, usually a very expensive version. Now, let's take a look here at the first uh, a facsimile of the uh, Q1, what's called Quarto 1. All right, stand, who is that? And it looks like tis I. That's how Hamlet starts in the first version. In the second version, Q2, about a year later, much larger, Who's there? Now notice that it's W, two Vs, H, O, S, anything like this. And it looks like an F, doesn't it, to us? But that's actually an S in Shakespeare's time. Nay, answer me. All right, so that's how the quarto number two, Q2, looks. And let's look at a print of the folio version. And I ran across that. This is the folio version. Who's there? Nay, answer me. Again, that's S, answer me, stand and unfold yourself. All right, it's a little bit different from the Q version. You'll see that who is spelled correctly. And so that's why we go to a modern editor like David Bevington in this case and do what's called the editor's choice. And let's look at editor's choice. They decide here in the modern editor's version to go with the correct spelling, who's, who is there. And then they put a little note here. <laughs> For those of you who are super nerds like me, if you wanna see what the variant, how it's different in Q1 or uh, Q2, Q1 here and Q2 here. Uh, and that shows what decision that the editor made that really doesn't have to do with Shakespeare. There are three different ways that it's printed. So some of these notes you might find boring as we go through the reading, but I want you to see why they're, they are there. And again, answer me. This is kind of important. He doesn't say answer me, he says answer me. And I will explain, and I have explained in our other class recording why this is the case. And in cases where you may not understand what something means, like unfold yourself, you can go to this and click it and it will show you identify who you are. So that's the end of our little supplemental video about how a modern edition is put together online, like the internet Shakespeare edition. And it's, I've taught for many years, and it's only been recently that I've been able to do, to show a class this, to show exactly what an editor, a modern editor is confronted with when they put together a production, uh, I'm sorry, an edition of Hamlet. Thank you very much. That's all. Thank you. Bye.